Welcome back to San Diego People this morning. Today we are talking about the most common type of cancer in America, skin cancer. I'm joined by Dr. Melanie Palm, founder of The Art of Skin, MD in Solana Beach, along with Joel Moody, who is a survivor of skin cancer. Thank you both so much for Thank being you. here this morning. Joel, I'll start with you um, because I think you have such an important message to share. Tell us a little bit about your, your story. Yeah, so it's probably going back about five or six years. Um, I was dating a girl at the time and she sort of prodded me to get my skin checked. Um, I'm kind of the typical, we kind of set it up in the, in the first part there. Typical San Diego, born and raised, surfed every day, wanted to be tan, tanning beds, just that generation. Um, and so when I went in to get the, the, um, the scan, or the body scan is what they call it, um, they found a couple spots and so they took them off and then I got the first call that I had melanoma. <clears throat> so that was on my chest. Um, so it's a little scary. You didn't, don't really know what it's about, especially, um, you know, even five years ago, it was, wasn't as talked about. So got in, got it removed, um, and fast forward a couple years later. So that was kind of got me started on my sort of program of getting my regular checkups. Right. So now I was going in every three months, um, and then by the end of two years, going in every six months. Um, so. I had another mole that was on my back that they were kind of keeping an eye on, and it got to the point where the, the doctor had said, well, we need to check this one. And so they did a biopsy on that, and that came back melanoma as well in my lower back. So we did the surgery, had it removed, had all the margins cleared, and uh, it was the depth of it and everything was on a, on a point where they could have did another, kind of took it a step further, uh, and they could have did what's called a sentinel node biopsy on it. Um, the doctor chose not to do it. Um, but what, what ended up happening is I thought I was all clear. You get melanoma uh, taken out early, preven preventative, do all the things right, you think you're fine. And unfortunately for me, uh, two years later, I noticed uh, a lump in my abdomen section. Um, and so I went into my doctor and uh, ended up having to go see a lymphoma specialist. And then he said, because of your prior history of melanoma, we need to remove it to be able to see exactly what it is. And so. Unfortunately, after that surgery, they pulled out the lymph node, and sure enough, the melanoma had gotten into my lymph, lymph nodes. And so now, that's kind of another level. Um, once it gets into your system, your lymph nodes especially, it could pretty much, it can go anywhere. And so, um, I had the surgery um, to remove the lymph node, um, had an, uh, another surgery, uh, well, a PET scan, and an MRI, brain scan. Uh, fortunately, it had, sp had not spread anywhere else. Um, so I had another surgery in, to go in and remove a couple li other lymph nodes in that chain. Those tested clear, which was good. Um, and then now I'm on a sort of a more high program of sort of following up with uh, blood work and physicals and PET scans. So I had another PET scan about a year later and that lit up again um, and they found another lymph node. Um, so I went in and decided to do another surgery. Fortunately that time it was just inflammation. and so. The, the kind of where I'm at now is um, I got another PET scan, another lymph node popped up, so I'm kind of in this lymph node removal state right here where things are coming up, um, and so far so good. Um, you know, they've, they've been testing inflammation, but uh, when you do the PET scans, there's no telling if it's melanoma or inflammation, so now within the next couple weeks, I'll be going in for my fourth surgery to remove another lymph node. And uh, I'm hoping for good news, but and keep a close eye on, on exactly. this as well. Yeah. And and Dr. Palm, I know that you met Joel kind of halfway through this process mm -hmm. um, after he'd already been diagnosed. But this unfortunately is is something that we we see quite a bit. Well, of. I think Joel is so such a good example of what I want San Diegans to see. He's a, a healthy, young, vital adult. Grew up here in San Diego. He's a young dad, and he is the prototypical example of what a melanoma patient mm -hmm. is. They're typically young, although it can affect all ages. You know, a history of ultraviolet light exposure, typically sun, but also tanning lamps can be contributive um, to. To this diagnosis and now he's sort of in the state where he's had a more significant melanoma it's been a stage three you know so we see each other every three months and we're constantly monitoring him but he has a team of doctors that's following him including a general surgeon and an oncologist in addition to me but we really you know May is melanoma awareness month it's skin cancer awareness month we really want patients and the people of San Diego to come in and see a board certified dermatologist and really get checked head to toe not just a cursory check but 
really get checked in your scalp, down to your toes, in all your nooks and crannies, because although ultraviolet exposure has a part in the majority of melanomas, um, you can get melanomas even where there hasn't been significant sun exposure. So I think it's great to have an example of somebody really touched by that. Um, you know, Joel has done this with me um, for a couple of years now, and we've helped save some people. You know, I just got a new patient that had melanoma diagnosed two days ago. He just spoke with a friend that now has metastatic melanoma yesterday. So it's really important. We want it to be on the forefront of people's minds to get checked. And, and as you kind of alluded to, to really make sure that, that the checks, especially with a history of maybe atypical moles or skin cancer, get checked thoroughly. Absolutely. There's definitely risk factors for developing melanoma. You know, there's, depending on the source, we think there's about 70,000 to 120,000 cases that are diagnosed each year, and a person dies every hour of melanoma. So, and it, and it seems to, um, have a preference of um, sort of in the younger age group being sort of a source of um, fatality. So we, we want to be all over this. But risk factors include a personal history. So Joel is a good example of that. He had a melanoma once and now has a, had a second one. A family history. If somebody has a large number of moles or unusual moles, which we call dysplastic nevi, or just means atypical moles, you really need to get checked more frequently. You know, the American Academy of Dermatology recommends once a year skin check. But if you have some of these risk factors, most of us as dermatologists will recommend twice a year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you're when you're talking to people who, you know, have have already had a history of this, there are also different kinds of scales that you use when you're talking about different skin cancers. And I know we had talked about it earlier, sure. but you have melanoma, you also have basal cell and squamous cell. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the differences there. Yeah. So I think just for ease of discussion, we typically divide most skin cancers there are weird outliers but into two groups melanoma types of skin cancer which we get really concerned about because if we catch them early there's a high cure rate but if they progress the risk of dying from it is is significant and those that are non melanoma skin cancers the most common of which are basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas about one in five individuals will end up getting a basal cell it's our most common form of skin cancer and usually appears as sort of a pearly pink bump on the skin um, squamous cell which in, unlike basal cell, basal cells typically related to intermittent bright sun exposure, like getting a bad sunburn when you were 17. Um, squamous cell is more cumulative. Your skin never forgets. So all of that cumulative sun exposure, tanning, bed exposure that you've had over your lifetime can develop into precancerous skin spots called actinic keratoses and even frank squamous cell carcinomas. A small percentage of these precancerous spots, we think somewhere around 3% can develop into squamous cell carcinomas carcinomas. Both of those have a much lower risk of going into lymph nodes, metastasizing, going into other organs, but certain ones, especially squamous cell carcinomas, if they're in sensitive areas such as the tip of the nose, the mouth, the ears, um, or are more aggressive forms can spread. So, you know, even those that aren't melanomas, we really want you to look out for and get checked. I love, I love that saying that you mentioned, your skin never forgets, a good motto that uh, we should be telling our kids because um, we all love to play out in the sun. Joel, thank you so much for sharing your story and thank certainly uh, hope there's more good news uh, too. in thank the future you. as well. Thank you both for being here. We're going to take a quick break, but still ahead on San Diego People, there is a lot of information and a lot of myths out there about preventing skin cancer. We will talk to our doctors again about what's true and what's not. Stay with us.